Where do you find some of these records? Now, a lot of people go on Ancestry, Family Search, My Heritage, Find My Past, a lot of these places to search for records, but there are a lot of records that are outside of those locations. We're going to talk a little bit about both, where we can find these records, both online and in person, but some of these records, like I said, are, you know, at places like Ancestry, and we'll talk about that, but we're also going to show you where you can find some of those other records. And by the way, who is we? It's just me here. <laughs> I guess that's me, myself, and I. Here we go. Now, this is actually kind of part two. Last week, we talked about a checklist of all the different types of records, the common records that you might want to find. So when you're looking for records, right, you are searching for, you know, things like vinyl records and census records. We did all of that in the, the last episode where we kind of created a checklist of records because when I first started doing genealogy, I wanted a checklist. I wanted to be like, yep, found that. Yep, nope. Oh, here's a place I need to go look. So we created this checklist, even though it's not really everything you could possibly find. It certainly is a good starting place. So in this episode, we're really digging into uh, where to find some of those records that are on the checklist. We can't go through the entire checklist today, but uh, you're going to get the idea. We're going to we're going to dump in <laughs> dump. We're going to jump into a lot of the record locations even if it's off some of these platforms that we're used to researching on Ancestry and Family Search, etc. So I think one of the first things we want to talk about is wills and probates. Let's get into that because wills and probate now kind of go hand in hand, right? A probate package can contain a will, but a person who died without a will could have a probate packet. So a lot of times probate packets occurred when there was land involved. So there could be more records to find with land and probate records. You can find some of those land and probate records on places like Ancestry, right? People also upload some of the documents that they find, but you can also find wills and probate. I have the most success at state archives, but you can also find them sometimes at the county courthouse because these are court documents, right? When somebody died and had to file uh, probate, with the courts. Now, a couple terms, intestate versus testate. Intestate means they died without a will. Testate means they did die with a will. So a lot of times, if you look on Family Search, they say that only 10% of the population died with a will. But I would say that as we progress in time closer to present day, more and more wills you'll find. So it just depends. And it also depends on the location and the era in which you're researching. So wills and probates, definitely one to talk about. So let's talk about census records for a moment. Now I'm on Ancestry. You can find all the census records there. In fact, some of their records are free. I think it's the 1880. 1800. I forget exactly. There are a few census records that are, that are there for free. But you can research all the census records for free on Family Search, and at the National Archives, uh, which is I think Nora.gov. So you can search. I think the best place to search for census records is actually on Family Search. One of the reasons why I say that is because one is that Family Search's viewer is cleaner. It's easier to see. It's not as contrasty as at Ancestry. Now, I love Ancestry, don't get me wrong. I probably go here first, but if you're having trouble reading some of the, the faint the handwriting on there, go to Family Search and look for the same one. So before you leave Ancestry, if you're having trouble reading part of the census record, before you leave Ancestry, make sure that you're taking note of all of the top matter on the census record because uh, it's up there where you're going to be able to find the same record on Family Search. So uh, just check that out. Make sure that you're doing that. And then you can go and find the same record on Family Search and 
most of the time it's easier to read on Family Search. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about with the differences in Ancestry versus Family Search. Now, here is my ancestor, Christopher Madsen, and his wife, Laura, and infant son. And if you click over and you find the same one on Family Search, you can see that the quality of the image is a little bit easier to read. So, point being is when you're looking for census records and you can't, you know, really read how faint this might be, I might not be able to see what this says, I can click over here and say, oh, Okay, now I can read it a little bit better. Now, in Ancestry's defense, there are tools over here where you can invert the colors and see if it's easier to read that way. They, you know, you just play with some of the tools and see if, if they're helpful. You can also change some of the settings, turn on and off some of the basic viewer versus enhanced viewer. So as you can see, when we, when we turn off the enhanced uh, we we'll go down here and turn off the enhance. Sometimes it's easier to read, but it's still not as as deep a quality as what we find on Family Search. One of the things that you can do is search immigration records, and so check this out. So here we've got my uh, great great grandfather, Christopher Madsen. He's on the last line here. He's 22 years old. Now remember, we've got immigration immigration and naturalization kind of all lumped together in that category of migration, if you will, from one country to another. So immigration with an I is when people are arriving to the United States or to a country in this case. Immigration with an E is when somebody is leaving. So you want to be looking for both records. Okay. And then you also have naturalization when people are trying to become a citizen of that country. So that's just scratching the surface of what you can find for immigration records in general. So here's my great-great-grandfather, Christopher Madsen. He's 22 years old. This is an immigration record arriving in the United States through Ellis Island in 1873, March 25th, on the USS Nevada. This is when he is leaving Denmark, headed to the United States, and so this record came from, now I found it originally on Ancestry as an index, and then it led me to the Danish National Archives database. It took me a little bit of time to find it because I had to play with the search filters, but I did find it. You can also search on Genealogy Bank has some passenger lists. This is genealogybank.com. I was actually surprised when I was doing some of the research for this that this had it. A lot of this is in newspaper um, records because they're primarily a newspaper repository online. You can also search at Ellis Island for free. I find this to be a little challenging because the indexing, you really have to be exact on the spelling. And if there's any variations in how somebody read the handwriting, then you might not be able to find it. But you can search here for free if you want to give that a try. Yeah, I did a whole episode on how to search at Ellis Island. It's actually heritage.statueofliberty.org is where you can find a passenger list. So one of the other cool things that you can find, though, is things like newspaper articles about your immigrant ancestor coming to the United States. This one doesn't name my ancestor, but it talks about the steamship that he came in on was the Nevada, and it's and it looks like it's uh, Wednesday, April 3rd. This one happens to be um, 1873, so this was the same date that he was arriving, so there was a notification in the paper about his ship arriving. And you can also find pictures of the ship sometimes, if you Google it, you can find pictures and, or I found this one years ago on Norway Heritage, I think it is. I'll put the link on the screen. Um, but yeah, so this, they've got some beautiful images over there on uh, the Heritage, the Norway Heritage uh, website, and it's not just Scandinavian ships. So be mindful of that. So immigration and naturalization records are so fun to find. You can also find uh, I, now, I haven't found it for this ancestor, but you can also find 
passports, which is part of that whole process, right, of, of someone immigrating to another country. So if you can find passports, that's really cool. So the next thing we're going to talk about is vital records. Vital records, you can you know, find them in a variety of places, right? You can find them on Ancestry. You can find them on Family Search, MyHeritage, all the big players. You can find them at the county level where the event occurred. Birth, marriage, and death is what we're talking about, okay? And then you might be able to find some of them with the family members. So keep in mind that uh, with vital records, a lot of people who are really married to ancestry and feel like that's their first stop that okay fine so you're going to go to you know ancestry and search there and what you would do is you would go to search and you could do uh, birth marriage and death records right from here and search your ancestor or you could go down to the card catalog and really get into everything with regard to birth marriage and death but here's the thing on Family search, let's jump over there. On family search, if you click the more options, now I'm I just went to search records, okay, and then I clicked on here, I'll show you again, more options, and then you can search here. Family search is really big into vital records. So if you can't find it on one place, go to family search and search there. Also keep in mind that more recent records you would be able to find at the county level in the area right but the older records may have been moved to a state archive if they haven't been digitized and are already available i would always check with family members first if it's you know within you know reach of how a, a marriage birth or death record may have been inherited uh, to the family also keep in mind that birth and death records in many states in the United States, that is, uh, were not available until around 1909, the 1912, somewhere in there, and some places didn't come into compliance as late as 1918, 19, somewhere in there. So marriage records go back farther into the 1800s, just depending on the location. But also keep in mind that you're also looking for evidence of Evidence of a marriage, evidence of a birth, evidence of a death. And that could be coming in a variety of places. You could be finding it in cemeteries, find a grave, billion graves, that kind of stuff. You could find it um, in marriage registries, marriage announcements in the newspapers, marriage bonds, marriage bans. You know, there's so many different places you could find evidence of a marriage. Evidence of a birth might be birth certificates, of course, until we don't have birth certificates farther back. Christenings, baptismal registries, you know, all kinds of different church records, cemeteries, tombstones, right? So, I mean, we can sometimes, if we can't find an actual birth certificate, an actual marriage certificate, we might be able to find evidence of, even a divorce record is evidence of a marriage. Okay, so the next subject that we're going to talk about is where to find newspapers. We're going to start with kind of some free resources. While Family Search doesn't have a lot of newspapers, they do have a few newspaper collections. But if you go to the card catalog on Family Search and you just keyword uh, newspapers, you can find uh, a whole list of where to find stuff. Also, on Chronicling America, you can get to the newspapers that are free for the United States. So those are a couple of free resources. Now there's also newspapers.com, which is owned by Ancestry. So those are going to be integrated with their search functions. Okay. There's Genealogy Bank, which is uh, a paid subscription to search here. You got to keep in mind that all of these different newspaper repositories some of the newspapers overlap, but some of them are unique to each platform. So it kind of depends on where you're searching. If you want to go to Ancestry.com and go drop down into the, to the card catalog and then drop down into Newspapers, you can see exactly what they have available in newspapers from all around the world. Here's one you probably haven't thought about, Stars and Stripes, which is the United States military newspaper. It has its own archive that is searchable. 
There is Find My Past, which has its own searchable newspapers from Great Britain, you know, that whole UK area. You have My Heritage, which has a, a newspaper repository for different countries around the world. So here they have some France. Now remember, My Heritage bought Filet, which is a French genealogy company. And so they now own all of the records and stuff there. So I think with that came some of the newspaper repositories. Not all newspapers are digitized, remember. So it might be that you have to go to the local county library and find some of those older newspapers and maybe ask the librarian, hey, do you guys have newspapers that are not uh, online anywhere? And if so, how can I see them? Now, in some places, they may have microfilmed them, but they haven't put them online anywhere. So be mindful of that. You know, if you have an event that happened in your family history in a certain period of time, you can peruse the newspapers in and around that time period to see if there's a marriage announcement or something going on uh, with your family history. So newspapers, huge, huge source. Okay, we're going to talk about maps now because maps, I think, are one of the biggest overlooked resources that we have as genealogists, and maps can really help give context. And in some cases, I've even been able to trace where the census taker walked on a map showing the actual people on a map. So sometimes you can find your ancestors listed on a map, as I did with this 1885 map in uh, Laramie, Wyoming, I could see exactly the route that the the census taker took. So that was really cool. So let's jump over here and look at maps for a minute. This is oldmapsonline.org. All you have to do is click on browse old maps. Here I found some Kansas maps that I was just goofing around looking for old maps and you know, you can find all kinds of things. You can also keyword research up here in the upper corner. And so that might be helpful. Here's the David Ramsey historical map collection. This is quite a collection. It's, it's really incredible. And so it's just a matter of searching. I was trying to find some postal route maps over here. I was unsuccessful on this site, but they have some, some really incredible collections and they overlay some of them on Google Earth if you want to see some of the old maps overlaid on top of uh, current day Google Earth maps. Here is also from the David Ramsey collection a postal map that I did find. It's it, I had to keyword a variety of things. At first I was looking for postal maps. I found it under post route so just it's a matter of playing with keywords and so here I found an old postal route. It even shows um, some railroads and stuff. These maps really help give you context when you are reading different stories and different histories and, you know, trying to put it together as to where your ancestors were. Maybe you're reading land records or deeds or wills where they're talking about land descriptions. So maps are certainly important. Here is the New York a public library digital collection. They have a map collection. I was looking under places. This is what I saw, mostly New York State map collection. Of course, at the card catalog at Ancestry, you can find um, some maps. In fact, sometimes it's just easier to uh, keyword the word map, and then you can drill into the location. Here's maps and atlases. And you've got a variety of places you could then drill into wherever it is that you are searching to see what kind of maps they have. Of course, you could always sort by record count to give you the largest population of records. In this case, U.S. indexed land ownership maps from 1860 to 1918. Pretty cool. Over here, we've got DPLA. That's the Digital Public Library of America. You can search maps here as well. Looking over here, now this is a different site. This is the Newberry Maps and Boundaries at the Newberry Library. You can search border changes here as well as you can at uh, Maps of US. This is mapsofus.org. And if you click around, in this case it happens to be Oklahoma, if you click around at the different years, you can see where the borders, I'm just bouncing around between years, 
you can see how the borders change over time, which is can be helpful if you are searching, you know, an area. It could be that you have an ancestor that didn't actually move, but the borders changed around them, so the records may be in different counties. This is the digital collection at North Carolina. I thought this was a pretty cool map. This is of Chapel Hill in 1818. And if you look closely, you can see some people's names listed in here on their houses. So, you know, number 16, Abner Clompton. This is his house. <laughs> I think that is just a really cool little map of Chapel Hill in 1818. That's Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So maps, make sure that you are paying attention to maps. It's so important. I love that map. Okay, so there is a handout for this episode. And all of the usual folks that get it, the, the happy dance level on patreon.com forward slash genealogy TV, the folks that join here on the YouTube channel at the information access level or higher, you can also buy them at genealogytv.org. So I was not able to go through everything on that list that we had created as far as kind of the, the standard go-to checklist of places you should be looking when you're doing your research. Now, the handout has a lot of the locations. Of course, it's not everything. My gosh, I would have to build, you know, a, a giant website to hold all of the different places. You know, Google's always your friend. You can find them there. Another place you can always look for resources is at familysearch.org in the wiki. Um, so there's, that's a good resource as well. So I hope that was helpful. There was, you know, at least five places I think that you could go and look for your resources and get really a good handle on, on some of the stuff that you're looking for. Make sure you're subscribed. My gosh, you don't want to miss subscribing. You know you want to subscribe. Come on, hit the subscribe button. All right, so we'll catch you in the next video. And if you subscribe and ring the bell, you'll get notified next time I upload a video. We'll see you next time.